morning everybody um i haven't done this in quite a while it's kind of crazy it's been kind of crazy but um with the move and finally having a studio at home it's as you can see not done but i'm getting there um it's just been a busy couple of months uh, a lot busy <laughs> okay Excuse me. I've had to um, redo all of my equipment at home, so it took a while to get things set up and working. So what we're doing today is I'm not going to give you any sizes because you need the pattern from the designer, but this is a great scrap quilt. It's called Beach Days. Oops. Okay. It's really cute. I really like it. And basically, all I did was go through my scraps. That's it. I just went through my scraps. Um, I have a lot of scraps. I'm sure you guys have a lot of scraps. But yeah, that's all I did was go through my scraps. It's a lot of smaller piecing, much smaller than I normally would do. But it's a great scrap quilt to get rid of some of your scraps now you can make it larger my suggestion is there are a few pieces um templates in the back of the pattern so i suggest okay that you blow up the pattern on your printer and enlarge it enlarge it uh by a percentage an even percentage if you can, 50%, um, whatever it is. Whatever you enlarge this, that's what you're gonna multiply your smaller pieces by, okay? So if you wanna do this twice as big, then you're gonna enlarge these by 50%, or at least half, 50%, and then you're gonna increase your, um, smaller pieces, you know, the same amount. I know it's a little bit difficult, might take a little bit of figuring out, but it can be done pretty easy. For instance, okay, um, add an inch, just add an inch to every measurement. I traditionally don't like to work with small pieces, but it's a really cute wall hanging. Um, being in Florida, I think it'll be a great addition to my studio. Okay, so let's get going real quick before I have to go and open up the store. And I'm not even at the store. So this is what the first piece that we're going to start with. And again, I'm not going to tell you sizes, okay? But as you can see, here is the first piece, which is a lot of half square triangles. Okay, all I'm gonna do is work on this first, add these two, and then add this one last. It's not difficult, okay? So I hope to do a lot more of these videos. And instead of putting this on Facebook, I am gonna actually work on editing the video, making sure it's nice and clean and neat. And then I'm post to my YouTube. I'm trying to increase the YouTube and make it a little bit more um, professional looking and give you more content. Well, at least I hope to. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend um, Best Press, a structure alternative when you're working with such tiny itty bitty pieces, okay? Um, it's gonna help with your piecing, so it's not gonna stretch as much. As you can tell, I've left the dog ears on. I don't 
99% of the time cut my doggies off because it, for me, it acts as an anchor and gives me something to shoot for as far as um, my quarter of an inch. Meaning, if I have a doggy like this, okay, I'm going to shoot for that right angle when I'm doing my quarter of an inch, right there. It also, we, another reason why I don't necessarily cut off my door gears is I have a brother and baby lock machine and they tend to want to um, they want to suck the beginning of your stitching, whatever you're stitching into the plate, needle plate. And I find that extra little dog ear actually helps stop that. Does it stop it all the time? No. Um, I'm going to be working on a uh, scrappy quilt. Maybe not so scrappy as what you, most of you are looking used to. Um, but using Bonnie Hunter's leaders and enders idea, I'm going to cut a bunch of blocks and put them off to the side and that's traditionally what I'm going to be working with in the beginning and the end of my um piecing hopefully it'll work really well so now I'm just going to take this piece and stitch it right there and all right, let's keep going. I am tired. It, I was in the, the studio, which is at my home, pretty late last night, trying to get the do the last setup for the cameras. And lighting, oops, I lost my thread. Um, it's, it's a lot to try and get all of this done. But yeah, I think it's going to be better from here on out because it'll always be set up and I can do a video anytime I want. Woohoo! Well, not necessarily anytime because this is in my home, so I can't do it all at the shop. I might have to invest in one more camera, I think, for the shop just for impromptu videos and for videos working on the long arm. It's just been kind of crazy. It's a lot to change, and I hate moving with a passion. It's not my favorite thing to do, I can tell you that. All right. There we go. Now, all I have to do is sew these two half square triangles together and that is the basic piecing for the first few rows in the sky, other than having a square. It's a lot of little pieces, but if you're organized and label everything, you know, I'm not going to show you, but I have everything clipped with a little tag that says how big it is. It just, I am tired. It's so much to get done. Try to keep everything going not fun but there you go so that's the first part okay and you're going to alternate a bunch of blocks just pay attention to um your layout and check your pattern really 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 well okay and that's going to be 
on camera. The first um, five rows, which is a little bit difficult to see this far away, but we've got these blocks smattered throughout. Don't go crazy trying to um, make sure everything is matchy matchy. Literally go through your stash. You can use as little or as many blues in the sky as you want. This is gonna be a scrappy quilt. I recommend it being a scrappy quilt, okay? Um, I used sometimes only pieces as big to get some of the parts. Just go through your stash. Okay, next part. Let me get this one set up. We just got a lot of pieces. Do the houses, which I think are really cute. Okay. So I hope you guys like how this bit is being done. Let me know um, what you think. Is it good? Is it not so good? I hope it's going to be good. It's taken me a while to get everything organized and I'm still not organized by any stretch of the imagination. Trust me when I tell you. Let me make sure I've got these. Yep, 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 yep. okay. Yes, I have a ton more to organize at the shop and here. Like you can't see behind the camera, I have a ton of boxes. That's what happens when you downsize in one area, you got a bunch of stuff that has to go someplace else. Well, it's my home studio until I get it all organized. Okay. Here we go. I know it doesn't look it, but this is all going to go together really simple. It doesn't look it. It looks difficult, but it's really not. And I'm going to show you a couple of tips for making sure these are pieced on correctly. All right, we're going to take this first row. I'm going to put these two pieces together. So now, if there's something that you want to see in the future, let me know. Um, I will be happy to try and accommodate you. I can't say that I will be able to for everybody, but, you know, I'm going to try. Now we're going to put these two and then this one. And have fun with this, please. Please don't freak out. You know, a little bit is, your seams aren't perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Have some fun. Before I iron this, I'm gonna put the other part on. It should be fun. And I haven't had a lot of fun in lately with all this moving. So I'm enjoying just straight piecing again. It's definitely been um, different. I have not had a studio at home in almost seven years, seven or eight years. I mean, it's been a long time. And with the puppy, meaning Miss Nola, my little spaz dog, um, baby gates, do not work, okay? This dog with three legs has figured out how to get over baby gates. Can you see this look? I am not amused. <laughs> Trying to stop this puppy 
from eating everything, and I do mean everything, she eats anything that she, it's worse, it's like a toddler on steroids, okay? She eats everything. And she's only got three legs. You'd think that would stop her from doing certain things. No. But trying to keep her out of here when I'm working or um, keeping her from eating things, which it's going to be easier once I get things organized and there's not a lot of stuff on the floor or boxes that she can get into. But for now, it's Not only that, trying to keep my father from acting up or my husband or my daughter from interrupting me while I have a video. So it's a huge learning curve. Um, I think I'm going to do a big metal uh, or magnetic sign for the other side of the door that says, you know, I don't know, recording or whatever, keep out. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something, but. It's definitely not what I was expecting. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two together. And then I'm going to show you how to put these on so that they line up. This part is going to be pretty simple. It's not going to look simple, but it is. Okay, what I'm doing is... I'm going to line the sides up if it won't, if it will work. Sometimes things don't want to always cooperate, but it will. All right. So I'm lining up the straight side on the top, you know, about a quarter of an inch off on the bottom. I know it, sometimes people have issues with this, but if you have to rip it up, rip it out, I should say, then just don't freak out, okay? It's not rocket science. We're not... Um, this is supposed to be fun. You don't have people looking over your shoulder, although I do. <laughs> but don't let somebody tell you you did it wrong. We're talking about a little wall hanging to get rid of some of your scraps. We're not talking about a quilt that is necessarily going to be judged. So just have some fun. All right. Here we go. Okay. Now we're going to line these up, but let's do this one first. Let me show you a little trick because I don't cut off my dog ears. So I've ironed this over. Okay. Now, if I finger press it back the way it came, and line up this little corner with my dog ear. And then you can put your dog ear back, hold it back out. Guess what? That's going to line up perfectly exactly where I want when I fold this out. This, this edge will be nice and straight. I used to cut all my dog ears off. Then I found out that over years of trial and error, they actually work to my advantage. More than not. And you're not really adding a ton of bulk or extras or it's just not worth it. For me, it's better to keep them on. Oh, wrong one. 
There you go. Sorry about that. It's too early in the morning. So there's that side. Now all we've got to do is put this side on. What I'm going to do is quarter of an inch over on the top. See, that is my fabric that I'm going to sew on. If you do a quarter of an inch, and you can eyeball this, you do not have to sit there and try and measure a quarter of an inch. Eyeball it. If you eyeball it and put a quarter of an inch, and when you stitch, I'm going to start aiming for that little junction. And then stitch down. You should be pretty good as far as it flipping over and lining up with your top. You, after a while, you get really, really good at judging a quarter of an inch. And I'm all about easy. I want it to be easy and fun, no matter what I'm doing. And if it looks hard, but it's really easy, then I'm even happier. Hey, okay, look, you see how nice and straight that ended up? And all I did was eyeball, quarter of an inch. Now I'm gonna put this part on top. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle. If you take it one step at a time, you're gonna be fine. I'll tell you, it's been a difficult transition. I'm used to, you know, having all of my machines and everything I need in one place at the shop. And now everything is uh, in multiple places, from storage units to home to the shop. And it's not fun. Inevitably, what's been happening over the last few months is if I need something, it's in one place or the other. But whatever it is, it's not, not where I am. So there you go. We've already got the top half of our little house together. It's not been fun. <laughs> okay, so now this could have been done in one big piece, but they didn't in the pattern. So we're gonna put it together in halves. I'm gonna do one half and the other half. We're gonna one, put these three together that are the same size first. But yes, it's not been fun. Literally, I am, oops, um, constantly looking for things. And I received help from friends for the packing and the moving and, um, you know, nobody ever does it the way you would do it. So it's taken me quite a while just to find out what's in boxes because not everything was labeled, which makes it a little bit more difficult, a lot more difficult. It took me almost two weeks just to find my rulers. And as I'm working last night in my studio, I don't even have a cutting board in here. I have a cutting, a big table to use, but I don't have a mat. So I will be having to bring a mat home from the shop. <sighs> this is the first time I've had to do this in a very long time, but it's not fun. I will be very, very happy once this part is done, once this is all organized, you know, and it's taken a lot of work so far just to get to this point. I put up lights, I've had to redo floors, the whole emptying of the garage. This is a two and a half car garage that I've taken over because it was only being used for storage by my family, not, not even me that much. Um, and I had to do the floor and I had to move everything in here into storage units for my father and I did my daughter's stuff. I had to do like a lot. I think it took me over two weeks just to get 
this emptied and the floor done. It's a lot of work, but it'll get there. In the meantime, I was also doing the shop floor. So not fun. I'll be happy when I get a little bit of boring again. All right. Here's the three that we did. Now I'm going to put this one on top and on the bottom. I really want to do a lot more videos. Um, a lot more free content on my YouTube. I want to get better at a little bit more professional looking videos. I hope. It's always work in progress. I've, been, uh, I've come a long way compared to when I first started doing videos at the shop with just my phone showing you what came in. Um, but I think that's the nature of the beast, not only from COVID, because I was doing online classes way before that. But I've had to really step up my game because now everybody is doing it. I'm still working on a new website for classes and converting everything over. That's my biggest problem. I have way too many things that I want to do and there's never enough of me or time to get it all done. And I do need never. I have projects upon projects upon projects in my brain. And that list just gets bigger and bigger. All right, we've got this part done. Now we're gonna sew these two pieces together, which are the door. See, I told you this stuff is not, it's not difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a really fun quilt to get rid of some scraps. Just like the Christmas cheer one that we're doing in the shop. It's not, um, I'm not using a certain amount of fabric. I'm not using the same fabric throughout. I'm literally going through my scraps. A lot of Christmas fabric. Have, let's face it, okay? I have a lot of fabric, period. <laughs> a lot more than most. But that's what happens when you're a shop owner. I buy fabric because I like it, which means at least two yards of everything that I bring to the store is in my stash before you can even get in trouble. I have to get in trouble way before you do. And I have no problem getting in trouble. All right. So we've got this one. Now we're going to do these two or I should say three, and add this one. So each week for the next four to five weeks, I forget, I'm going to show you how to do two different rows of this quilt. I think you're going to like it. Some would may say, you know, from the pictures, it looks a little bit more old, but, or older, when you add your your stash, it looks new. I like it a lot, but I'm in Florida, so I like to see things. And this would be a great quilt because um, it's going to be small to work on the free motion. You can even do it on your home machine because it is going to be a small quilt. It's just a wall hanging. Maybe I will get a chance to have some of those videos. I shall see. I think I'm going to have to change the lighting a little bit in the cameras, but like I said, it's a work in progress. Lighting is probably the worst thing I, the other, not the worst, I should say the hardest part of all of these videos for me. Um, I know you can't tell, but I have glass block windows and cement walls. So it's not 
easy to drill or put anything into the walls. So I've had to figure out how to block one window so that the sun isn't um, blinding me during the videos or making it impossible for you to see me. And that's part of the whole learning process, the best time to do the videos. Um, yeah, it's not easy. Lighting is probably the hardest part for me. All right, so we've got these three pieces. Now we're gonna sew this one onto here and then we'll be able to sew this piece onto this piece before we put the top on. And the house is just about done. This is not difficult by any means. So once I'm done with the video, I'm going to go to the shop and see if I can first open up and two, work on editing the video a little bit before I post it to my YouTube page. Cross the fingers, the cups are good. It's, I've done a lot more live videos um, where I'm actually interacting with people and that to me is a little bit easier than trying to just record and talk to myself. All right, almost done. There you go. So now we're gonna sew this piece to here, put the top on and sew this half on. And just sew this really quick, quicky, quicky. It's a lot of tiny pieces. I keep usually working on tiny pieces, but I do like drawing a lot. And anything that gets rid of my stash that I like that's not super scrappy is a good thing too. Yes, I'm not a scrappy quilter. I need organized chaos. I can't just pick fabric out of a bag and say, okay, we're gonna use this one now. Nope, we're gonna use this one. Keep going. Yeah, no, that's not my style. It kind of drives me crazy trying to do stuff like that. But this stuff is easy. All right, now I'm gonna take the top, put sew that on, sew these two halves together, and then sew the two halves of our house together. And guess what? We're done for this week. Actually, I think these, I, let me know one way or the other whether you like this format, if you like the quilt, whatever. If you have any questions at all, just post them in the comments. Almost done. Now that things are set up, I'm hoping that I'll have a ton more videos because having to set everything up and tear it down and set it up and tear it down is not easy. Okay, so all we have to do now is put these two halves together. So now, you know, one of the good things about having a studio at home, all the cameras and everything get to be set up permanently. I don't have to keep adjusting lights until I get, you know, once I get it all straightened out for sure, I won't have to adjust cameras. I mean, I still have one more camera. I'm working with four cameras. And I think that little one is the one I'm gonna take to the shop as my um, shop camera, or, you know, for the option of showing you long arm videos, uh, what's in the box. I just have to take a few things to the shop um, get it working, if that makes sense. But I think it'll be good. I hope it'll be good. I really hope so. This has been, I know it's only been um, three months now, but it's been a long time coming. Okay, so now we've got our two halves. We're gonna sew our two halves together. And I am not getting rid of my dog ears, I'm telling you. 
I just don't, very rarely do I find the need to. They just, they don't, they're not in my way. They don't bother me. If anything, they only help me. They anger sometimes. Um, they give me a target to shoot for for my quarter of an inch scene to make sure my points line up. And guess what? It saves me time from having to cut all of those. I'm all about easy. I like easy. Easy is good. Now we've got our, um, let's see, what do we have coming up? And a uh, couple of weeks, we've, or almost three weeks, I think. A little bit less than three weeks, we've got our Kimberbell Flamingo Pillow Embroidery Project, which is a half day project, and we're doing that virtually. And the class includes the kit. So, ta -da. let me show you a close up. There you go. Oh, my camera has decided to turn. There you go. So, we've got these, and you're going to have a ton of different blue squares. And you've got your houses. You're going to make four houses. And I forget off the top of my head, there's a, a few of these and a lot of just squares. All right. If you have any questions, you know where I am. And I hope you like this video. And I hope this is just the first of many, many more now that we're starting to get things back to normal. All right, everybody, have a great day. You know where I am if you need me. Bye.